today, Intel CPUs just got a fix that hurts performance. Battle Mage GPUs are on the way. GPU prices are plummeting and AMD's opening up everything. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, if you've been following the channel, you know that I've been covering this story for quite a while now that's been developing, which basically showed that Intel's 13th and 14th gen CPUs were causing pretty major crashes in games. Since then, multiple developers have come out to say, yeah, uh, it's an issue with Intel CPUs. Intel themselves actually came out and at least acknowledged it and said that they're looking into it, but Early on, Tom's Hardware actually found that at least if you changed a couple BIOS settings, it more or less fixed the issues. Basically, what was happening is that it was going wild with power draw and it would come up with this out of video memory error. Now, early on, people obviously assumed that that was an issue with their GPU, but kind of find out it's actually a problem caused by the CPU. NVIDIA themselves then later stated, if your system is using an Intel 13th or 14th gen unlocked desktop CPU, and is experiencing stability issues out of video memory error messages, uh, yeah, we're going to need you to basically contact Intel. This is obviously to Intel's website. Now, as I said, though, early on, Tom's Hardware actually figured out that if you changed a few BIOS settings, it more or less fixed these issues. And a lot of people since then have come out and said, well, then it's clearly an issue with the motherboard. And while that is at least somewhat true, I do want to remind you, as Tom's hardware does, it says with past Intel CPUs, setting a TDP or amperage absurdly high generally didn't make a difference as complex frequency boosting rules determine how much actual power and current are used. However, the 13,900K in combination with certain BIOS settings appears to be more temperamental than prior chips. Basically, there does seem to be some difference, something that isn't in at least these higher end CPUs from Intel that used to be there that's more or less causing issues. So I do feel like a lot of people are completely blaming motherboard manufacturers, yet they've been doing stuff like this for quite a while now and it hasn't been an issue until these newer CPUs. Either way, with that said, ASUS just released a new BIOS update that actually has a new profile option called Intel Baseline Profile. And as you can see right here, it says it allows users to revert to Intel factory default settings for basic functionality, lower power limits, and improving stability in certain games. Basically, this is lowering things a bit to more default settings rather than trying to do like auto overclocks and things like that. So that obviously will come with a bit of a performance hit. And we actually already have some of those early numbers. As you can see right here, this is the ASUS Multicore Enhancements, which is basically it's set to auto versus this new Intel Baseline Profile. And as you can see, Cinnabench R23 multi-threading, 9% drop in performance, Y Cruncher 11%, and at least right here, the FPS didn't really go down, but F1 2023, we're looking at 8%, Shadow of the Tomb Raider down 8%. Now the power consumption is down 20%, so that's obviously a good drop, but, of course, seeing a drop in performance in these games is definitely not great at all, and you're likely going to see at least a bit of a drop in most everything, as you can see here. Now, of course, this obviously comes with more stability, which is more important than a few FPS, but still, I at least think it may even be important enough to go back and re-review some of these higher-end CPUs just to see how they now stack up, because, I mean, we are talking upwards of 10%, see it right here with Y Cruncher, 11% performance drops. Definitely does not look good. With that said, it's not all bad news for Intel, as we just got a new update for Intel's next generation Battlemage GPUs. As you can see right here, it says Intel has issued a series of patches that enable display support for the Battlemage GPU series. So basically, Intel is adding support for their upcoming GPUs, certainly making it seem like they are set for release before too, too long. Either way, this one does actually give us 
something important. They have actually removed UHB R20, which is 20 gigabits per lane in the DisplayPort 2.1 spec, meaning that it's now only going to go up to UHB R13.5 or 13.5 gigabits per second per lane. Basically, while it does support DisplayPort 2.1, it does not support the absolute maxed out UHB R20 version. And while it may be disappointing that Intel won't be supporting the highest DisplayPort 2.1 back don't forget that their current gen alchemist gpus only support up to displayport 2.0 so it is ultimately still an upgrade and next up it looks like gpu prices are plummeting pretty much everywhere starting things off in germany amd's rx 7000 and nvidia's rtx 40 gpus all of them have dropped below msrp but the good news doesn't stop there, as Newegg is currently running a pretty interesting deal right now. This currently goes along with the pay over time with Zimp promotion that they're running right now, where they're selling some GPUs with some pretty good discounts. Starting things off, we have the MSO. And before I get to this, I did actually go through it. It says with select items paying with zip, but I actually went through the process and it seems like as long as you are signed in, the discount code zip game still works. So I don't think you actually have to purchase with zip. I got it all the way to the end without actually buying the GPU and that discount was still there. Either way, as you can see, for one, obviously they're already discounted at least a little bit, but then we have 12% off up to $100 max. And starting things off, we have the RX 7900 XTX by MSI, and this one gets the full $100 off, bringing it down to $799.99. Oh, and if you're interested in any of these, I will have some affiliate links down in the description below. They don't cost you anything more, but it helps the channel out. Moving on, we have the 7900 GRE, which you'll see is $579.99, but then with the zip game code, brings it down to 51039, well below MSRP. Moving on, we have the 7800 XT, and once again with this code ZIPGAME, not really sure why it isn't showing up here. There we go, that's the GPU, and this one brings it down to 45759. Not a bad price for a 7800 XT. Moving on, we have the 7700 XT Sapphire Pulse, $399.99, but then with this, it brings it down to $351.99. And finally, we have the 7600 XT, at least so far, when you put in this code, $339.99, it brings it down to $299.19. So yeah, if you've been on the fence about buying a new GPU, this could be a great time. Obviously, prices are still technically through the roof, but this will at least help a little. Once again, all of these links are down in the description below. And lastly for today, I've got a huge story regarding AMD. This is seriously a wild one. If you remember not too long ago, I actually covered a story talking about Tiny Corp. This is basically a company that owns something called the Tiny Box and they're selling that. And what it ultimately is, is a heavily customized PC made for running inference locally for training AI. And this was started by George Hodds, who also started Common.ai, which is basically this open source self-driving platform. Either way, Tiny Corp was working with AMD to make their tiny box. And as you can see here, it says, if AMD wants us to help make their GPU better, they should open source firmware and documentation. No partnership required. Well, AMD seemed to be doing that, and now they have. It says, we are working to release Micro Engine Scheduler. This comes from AMD Radeon's official Twitter account, or X account, to release Micro Engine Scheduler documentation towards the end of May, and we'll follow up with published source code for external review and feedback. We have also opened a GitHub tracker, which will have the latest status on fixes and release dates. Basically, looks like AMD is seriously open sourcing like almost everything. So this is a really big deal, not just for AI, but I'd argue also gaming GPUs. This really could be huge. I do hope they keep releasing these, making them open source. Let's just say I'm definitely excited for this one. So while that does it for today, what are you most excited about with AMD open sourcing more and more of their tech? Let me know down in the comments below. 
And if you liked the video, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. And as always, have a great day.